no, sure. History history and helps me to know who the audience is. So it's, yeah. a, it's yeah. a young yeah. audience. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My, my daughter is 17. She's not in awe. <laughs> Your daughter's 17? No, my daughter, uh, now she's 18. She's but 18. Uh, yeah, she's, yeah, but I would say that she's, uh, you know, like most young people, they, they, they accept, you know, uh, digital photography, cell phones that take pictures and yes. transmit them instantly. They accept that as the normal course. That's what the world is. Yes. You know, and so, then when I try to tell them things that have happened like, you know, even five years ago, <laughs> let alone 20 years ago, they become quite disinterested I think yeah. so. so let's let's first introduce this man we're talking to Steven Sasson he is the well basically he's he's the one that got us into this mess Photokina digital photography um, you you developed the first digital camera yes that was back in 1975 we took our first digital images okay. at Eastman Kodak company okay. <laughs> so this is the actual first digital yes, camera this is the actual can I carefully photo. touch it yes yes it was, uh, it was built out of uh, a lot of spare parts. Uh, if you're an old phot photography guy, you might recognize an XL movie camera lens. Oh, oh that wow. We, that we took from a, from a used parts bin that was downstairs from us. And then all the circuitry in here was digital circuitry. And there's some batteries. And then if you look down here in the bottom, there's all the adjustments for that first CCD that was a Fairchild 100 by 100. So that makes it 0 .01 megapixel. That's uh, 10,000 pixels, right? 10,000 pixels. And it was just black and white. Okay. And um, uh, so we would grab a picture, and it took us about 23 seconds to record it on this digital cassette right here. I actually grew up with uh, with a Commodore 64 yeah. with a tape drive, which is pretty similar, I guess. That was high tech storage back then. Yes. That's exactly yes, I know. how you did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have any idea what this would trigger in terms of a cultural revolution, in terms of a, a industrial revolution? I mean, basically it totally transferred and transformed uh, a whole industry and created a lot of other industries. Have you had, had you, did you have any inkling of that? I, the only way I can answer that, I think, is when I, I had a chance to, when writing a technical report, as we always did when we did a research project, I, I had a chance to try to describe what the camera of the future might be like. And I think I started it off by saying that, you know, with improvements in technology, this approach might substantially uh, impact the way people take pictures in the future. Filmless photography, that's how I thought about it. That is, pictures without film and looking at them without prints, okay? Now, it was a long way away, okay? But back then, I didn't see any reason why it couldn't happen. But whether it might take 20 years or longer, uh, I really couldn't say. And I must say, I didn't predict a lot of the other things we take for granted today, like the internet and d inkjet and thermal printers and things like that. I, so I remember back in the 80s, I was hoping for solid state um, storage to come along for music. Yeah. And I was I actually envisioned to have something that you stick into a device and it plays music for you and we, we would, would basically get, a, get, get rid of the, of the round motion, of the re revolving so you, motion. So you wanted no moving parts too? Exactly, no moving parts. That was one of my ideas for the camera, is to be able to make a camera with no moving parts. Now, remember, cameras back in 1974 and 1975 were mechanical marvels. And in the research lab I was in, I was surrounded by people that really knew how to do real cameras. So to make a camera with absolutely no moving parts was kind of an interesting idea. Yeah, we, now, we still have the lenses, though. Yeah, we still have the lenses, and we still have a tape that moves. So I didn't really reach that goal, did I? <laughs> well, but yeah, well, I, I think you set, you set a pretty good precedent. I mean, this, is, this has revolutionized things. Um, I understand you, you actually hold the patents for, for digital photography in some way or for cameras? Yes, yeah, yeah. The first digital camera patent uh, yeah. that describes a, a CCD with an A to D converter and digital memory storage, and that was was actually written. I have that patent along with Gareth Lloyd, my supervisor, and that was issued in 1978. 1978. So does that mean for every sold camera you get a cent or two? Or well, I must tell you that <laughs> U.S. patent law in 1978 that that patent has long since expired. But it did start. Uh, Kodak continues uh, even today to turn out significant intellectual property around digital photography. We have many, many digital photography patents, and most, almost all, 
digital cameras today made by any manufacturer use Kodak technology in right. those cameras. It, that was invented at Kodak. So, what was your prediction back then when you invented this box? Um, when did, was your first of all was your prediction that this would surpass film one day? And if yes, what was your your prediction for the timing? Well. The aspirations I had back then now, it, well, this will test your memory now, it was 110 film. That was the sort of the consumer standard at the time. I remember 110. Like and it wasn't, wasn't a very good film format by today's standards, but that was far in the distant, way better than what I was working with here. So I was thinking we could probably get to 110 format, which was about one to two million pixels. Uh, I was thinking if you could get to that, that might be good enough for consumers. I wasn't really thinking much beyond that because that was even further out. Right. Remember, I was working with 0.01 megapixel. Yes. So to go to one or two megapixels is 100 to 200 times. That was a big stretch. But to go even more than that was, was pretty much way out in the future. So are you still um, today doing any development around that? Well, today I'm working, actually, today I'm working on the intellectual property side for Eastman Kodak Company. We have a significant intellectual property portfolio uh, that we represent to the industry, and so I, I, help, I help Kodak uh, execute on that. Right. What did you have for breakfast? What I had for breakfast was, uh, was an airline breakfast. I just okay. arrived, oh, and yes. so it was, uh, it, was, it was some kind of yogurt and some kind of pastry. Will you have any time here on the Photokina to actually walk around and uh, uh, can you still do that or are you a bit like a star where 10 people, 20 people, 30 people start crowding up and asking for autographs? No, I, no, no, that, that's, that's not the issue at all. Uh, the issue here is, is time. Uh, I, I just got here. I did get a chance to go around the Kodak booth, okay. booth, of course, and I will get a chance to get around the show. I really look forward to going around the show. It's great. Probably look forward to getting to bed sooner or later. Yeah, that would be nice too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I bet they let you fly first class, right? <laughs> Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> okay, um, Stephen, thank you very much. Um, we do one thing on our show, Happy Shooting. Um, towards the end, we do kind of a little um, greeting to the listeners. It's a three, two, one, Happy Shooting. Can we do that together? Okay. All right. So three, three, two, one, Happy Shooting. Happy Shooting. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you for bringing all this along because it's, yeah, it actually enabled, enabled me because I'm a child of the digital age. I grew up in the 80s and, and that, that was my youth and I... So your first digital camera was? My first digital camera was a, was a small HP point and shoot okay. and probably some Kodak technology in that. And um, even though I came from a film SLR, that really opened my eyes as to what... What a, first of all, what a fun teaching tool that is. I hold seminars, I, I get people, um, I show pictures to people right away. I mean, the, lear the learning curve is way faster than it ever was just because of a display on the camera. And that's just yeah. one small part of the whole yeah. development. Yeah, 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 that's true. And, and also the, all the computer programs you have to work with the image when you're done with it, right? That's, right. that's the really fun part. That spawned a whole new industry. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah, it did. It did. So this one doesn't have a display. No, no, we, <laughs> we were limited. <laughs> okay, Stephen. Thank you so much again. Thanks so much. And thanks for, thanks a lot. Thanks for inventing this thing. Yeah. <laughs>